What's going on guys and welcome back to another video and welcome to your stimulus package update and daily news report for Tuesday, March 15th. Now we do have some good news and I want to address the good news in just a minute, but here's what we're going to discuss in today's video. We're going to discuss a little bit of the stimulus package, what we could see. We're going to talk about how senators, including Senator Joe Manchin, are actually opposing President Biden's pick. Uh, for the, the Fed board, uh, going to give you some daily news as well and talk about the Russia-Ukraine uh, war because good news here, there's the expectation that we are going to see this invasion or war end by the middle to end of May. That's really good news. So I want to address what's happening and what some of the good news is for today. First, we do have good news as far as gas prices. If you've gone to the pumps recently, you've probably seen gas prices haven't gone up, but they're also not going down. They're staying very level. What we are seeing is the price of Brent crude actually fell below $100 per barrel today. Actually did this yesterday and it kind of continued on this trend today. The average gallon of gas in the US has actually fallen by one cent. One cent per gallon, that's actually pretty good, being it was going up about seven cents per day. But this means gas is $4.31 per gallon. Not bad, being that some were predicting six, eight, ten dollars $10 a gallon. So this means in crude, hey, the price in crude is simply meaning that we, we have seen a swing of about $36 in less than one week, okay? In about seven days. So this is very big and this is important to understand where we're moving, okay, the direction we're going. Because if it keeps going down, gas prices will start to follow. And again, I will address that in just a minute, kind of what we're seeing there, because it's somewhat concerning. And again, lawmakers are looking into this, but I will address something else in just a second. The other good news is that Russia will likely end the war in Ukraine in the middle to end of May. The reason why uh, people are saying this is because normally that's about the cycle of a, of a war. They're usually not, you know, 20 years long. Okay. They're, they're usually fairly short. Now, this is not due to the fact that Russia is willing to pull back. This isn't due to the fact that Ukraine is willing to hand over and just concede to Russia. Those aren't the facts. The truth is that Russia actually has a lack of resources. And because of this, Really what we are, are going to see, and I think this is interesting, Russia has completely miscalculated their uh, this, this invasion. And because of this, what, uh, what reports are saying, and this is actually according to uh, or Ukrainian President uh, Zelensky's chief of staff, and it's coming from multiple others as well, is that we are going to see this end, and it's going to end almost abruptly. That, well, we're out of resources. You know, no more MREs, which Russia was trying to get China to provide the MREs, the meal ready to eat, because they didn't have it. They didn't have it. Soldiers had to actually go look into uh, residential neighborhoods to try to get food because Russia just didn't supply them with what they needed. Because guess what? They were there for a special operations mission, not to overtake Ukraine. And so that's kind of where things are headed at this point. Now, I want to touch on gas prices for a moment as well, because even though the, the price of crude is going down, according to experts, we are going to see gas prices stick anywhere between that $4.30 $4 range. This is going to happen for a little while. And they say this will happen because we are easily going to see oil companies try to profit off the American people in these tough times. Even though prices are going down, we have a war. The American people think ah, prices are going to go up, but that's not the case. So even though crude is coming down, we could actually see prices stall for a couple of weeks and we need to be prepared for that. But this is something that Congress and the White House is going to be looking into because they want to make sure that these oil companies are not going to price gouge the American people, which is looking like they're going to try to but again, we'll see what happens there. And again, as I know more on that, I will fill you in on all the latest news and updates. Now, let's talk about what the Senate is doing and actually working on right now. Because first, let's just be let's just be clear with this. 
We don't see anybody pushing the Building a Better America bill right now, especially in the Senate. This seems to be getting worked on in the House uh, by House Democrats first, and then we will see what they propose. Here's the issue though, okay? We do know that President Biden is urging Democrats to come together so that they don't risk losing the House and the Senate, and President Biden is stuck with the Republican Congress, and we have a Democratic president. That's a problem because at this moment, Senator Joe Manchin is still standing in the way of passing a big, robust bill. We also know climate is on the table. We know the, the child tax credit payments are still on the table. It's still something that is being discussed. Paid family leave is still there, right? We know universal pre-K still on the table. There's a lot of tax credits. That's what we're seeing. But here's the, the overall problem. Right now, Senator Joe Manchin is looking at the national deficit. Well, the national deficit does not look good. He's also looking at inflation. Well, inflation is not looking good. So when we have high inflation and over $30 trillion in our national deficit, or for 23 to 30 trillion, whatever, you know, depending on how you want to calculate that. But what you need to understand at this moment is he's looking at two big numbers and nothing is going to move him off of these nothing until we see inflation start to fall well tomorrow and the federal reserve actually has their holds their discussions today and tomorrow as well but tomorrow they're going to give us a, a rundown of what they discussed and kind of what was talked about well this is going to be very interesting news we're expecting a uh, a quarter point rate hike that's what everybody's expecting so if it's anything different well we'll see what happens and see what the market does and how they react then but According to Senator Joe Manchin, we have to see inflation pull back. It has to come down before we start you know, passing out additional stimulus to the American people and really providing for our economy. So we'll see. One thing I can tell you though, is that right now, like future stimulus is still being discussed in the house because lawmakers believe that is what we need. It's really just one person in the Senate. Okay. So if, if uh, you really think you need or we need additional stimulus, one of the things that, that Democrats are going to do is try to push and try to get the American voters to vote Democrat uh, in the upcoming midterm elections. Because, and again, this is the, the kind of narrative that we're going to see is that if we have more uh, Senate Democrats, then we can get through these different provisions through a budget reconciliation. But right now, with a 50-50 Senate, you know, 50 Democrats, 50 Republicans, then we got uh, 51 as uh, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris, should be the tie-breaking vote. What you need to understand is if there's 51 or 52 or even 53 Senate Democrats, they could get this thing through, but there's not. So that's the, the narrative that we're gonna see push, you know, moving forward, is we need more Democrats in, in the Senate. But Republicans are going to go the complete opposite way that, no, you need less Democrats, you need more Republicans, or else you're going to get stuck with, you know, increased inflation, increased national deficit, right, and all these other things. So just keep that in mind as we move forward. But just because Senator Joe Manchin is standing in the way of a, passing a big, robust bill, well, it doesn't stop there. We also know that Senator Joe Manchin, uh, Senator Murkowski, and Senator Collins all oppose advancing Sarah Bloom Raskin to the Fed board. And this is actually causing a lot of problems uh, amongst Democrats in the at this time, because we do know Senator Raskin, right? Uh, Senator uh, or uh, Sarah Bloom Raskin's husband, uh, Jamie Raskin, right? He is he's a senator. Well, I think he's part of the the January 6th committee. He's part of other things as well. Well, this is causing a lot of issues, because obviously family issues here. But Democrats say they're not going to give up and that this is who they want and need in this position. So we'll see how much movement we get here because this is not the only seat that has to be filled. This was just supposed to be seen as the, the easiest. This is the simplest. Let's push this through. Let's get it confirmed. Well, it hasn't happened and likely won't happen. Now, good news. We do have some stimulus, though, going out to the American people. And I want to be very clear on this. Because just the other day, I kept seeing that uh, people in California are getting an additional $1,500. No, you know, people in California, yes, are, are getting money, but not everybody in California. What we know is that essential workers or 
uh, what they're calling a, a hazard pay bonus. It's a check of $1,500. It's actually gonna be going out into Sacramento County. So in order to get these checks, you have to be a, a county government employee who worked during the COVID pandemic. Now here's the thing. You can either get $1,500 as a one-time payment or you can get 40 hours of paid time off, okay? So either one. Now, it really depends on how many hours you worked and everything like that, but good news is you can kind of choose. So uh, we'll see what happens there. But the reason I bring this up, because I know there's not, I probably don't have an overwhelming amount of people that you know are watching the channel from Sacramento County. If you are, let me know down in the comment section below. But the reason I bring this up is because I've said this before. More and more cities, counties, and states are going to provide assistance to their residents, but this is going to take some time. This will take some time. So just understand, it's not gonna happen immediately. Your city, your county, your state may be delaying this a little bit because, well, they got a lot of stuff they're working through as well. And trying to put together a budget for this fiscal year could take a little bit of time. So we'll see. But in other news, here's some interesting things that are going on today. China exporters are now warning uh, buyers of massive delivery delays for any online shoppers. And this is due partly uh, because the millions of people that are currently in a seven day lockdown, and this is possibly going to be lifted in about five days. But that means a week of delays. That week of delays piled upon you know new orders uh, and just additional delays, it's just keep pushing things back. So just keep in mind, Things going from you know China to the United States, they took a little bit to get here anyway. And we could see additional delays because of this. So it's a little bit uh, concerning, and that is where we're at this moment. We also learned yesterday that China doesn't want any part of the US or European sanctions. So even though they will continue their normal trade with both Ukraine and Russia, China says they don't wanna be seen as a contributor to what Russia has going on, which, is part of the reason why uh, many believe that Russia will end the war as soon as they run our resources, which reports indicate could be by the middle to end of May. Again, and I believe this is what most experts have been predicting for a couple of weeks, is that we will see right about May, sometime in May, that is when all this stuff is gonna end. So that could be very good news moving forward. Because if we got uh, this war uh, between Russia and Ukraine that ends in May, we got COVID cases that are coming down. We hopefully have supply chains that are going to be uh, improving, right? We have a direction from the Federal Reserve, what they're gonna be do, doing with interest rates. We will have more reports because again, if this comes out, let's say the end of May, that means, let's say uh, beginning of June, we're gonna have the, the CPI data and the jobs report for, we're gonna have it for March, April, and May, okay? Soon after that. So we could have a lot of these big fears and this uncertainty. We could have this, uh, we could have an idea as to where we're headed by the end of May or beginning of June. So that's really good news there. We also know that Russia is actually headed towards a $150 billion default nightmare. Tomorrow, okay, on Wednesday, Russia has bond payments due and it is believed that they will default on these payments. And the reason, and I'm gonna give you a reason for this because it's, it's interesting but this will be the first time that Russia has a foreign currency default since 1917. Russia also has to pay $117 million tomorrow. Now the issue with this is that Russia, due to sanctions, has to pay this in rubles, okay? Here's the reason that's a problem. Failure to pay or paying in a local currency other than dollars would start the default clock. You see why this is an issue? Yeah, Russia is gonna pay in local currency well, you can't pay in local currency. You have to pay in US dollars. So the amount due is expected to be around $150 billion in total, okay? So this is gonna be interesting to see how they get out of this one, but we will see and I will bring you the news as we get it. We also know that in, in Kyiv, residents have a 35 hour curfew starting today after multiple missile strikes. So things aren't stopping, things are actually only intensifying and heating up. But as always, as I know more, I promise I'll come back on, share all latest news and updates. Just wanna thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Enjoy, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button, consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys on the next one.